Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to be doing a review about the Spy Point Force XD. Okay, so here's the camera. So first of all, I'm gonna go over um, just some of the specs, and then I'm gonna go back and dive into some of the technical features and some of the things that I've seen, and then what I like and dislike about this camera after using it for a few years. First of all, you can see the build of this camera is fairly compact. It's about the size that you'd expect from a modern camera. The battery compartment is in the back and you simply unscrew this the screw bolt thingy here. It takes eight AA batteries that go in the back right here. Now this already is a design flaw because ants seem to always find a way to get up underneath this compartment and into the battery's case and has made the camera quit working on several different occasions. So right off the bat, that's one thing that I really don't like about this camera is that ants can get into the battery compartment and make the camera non-functional. So from the front, this thing looks pretty sweet. Um, has everything you'd expect. You've got the spy point branding, has the sensors, LED flash bar, the camera, whatever. Um, this particular one we've had for a couple years and squirrels have chewed on it. So that's why the marks are there. It has the regular tripod adapter on the bottom. I feel like they could have maybe made this door just a bit sturdier. It's made of plastic and doesn't seem to be very strong, but I haven't really had any issues with it yet. So opening up the camera, it has a fairly simplified menu system, which I personally really like. Every trail camera you have from a different manufacturer is going to have a different menu system. So this menu system is fairly simple once you get used to it. It has option for photo and video and time lapse. You can set time lapse to however many minutes apart you want the pictures to be taken, which I have never used on this camera. And picture mode, you can set it to either 10 seconds or a minute, which I personally think that they should have either a 15 or 30 second gap. And that's one thing I definitely dislike about this camera is that it's either gotta be 10 seconds or a minute. I really have not done a ton of video on this camera just because of battery. I like to save batteries as much as I can. So I personally have not really done much with a video on it. I have tested it out and it does work and seems to be decent quality, but I really don't have a lot to say about the video on this camera. So the SD card slot is on this side, which is a pretty good design because as you open up the door, you can just pop out the old SD card and put the new one in. So once you have an SD card in here, you can push it and it'll back out once you want to eject the SD card. Some trail cameras, you have to manually pull it out instead of pushing it in and it pops out. So overall, I'd say they did an excellent job on putting the SD card slot where it needs to be and functioning how it should be. So this is the strap that comes with the camera. The end on here is a decent design. Um, it seems to grip fairly well and hold pretty tight. You can either run this strap directly through the camera here, which um, would hold the battery compartment down, or you can run it through this bracket, how I have it, which makes it super simple to set up on the tree. You simply run it around, tighten it down, get the bracket on the tree, and then you get the trail camera and, and clip it on, just like that, and the trail camera's on the tree. So I've not really had much trouble with the trail camera coming off of the bracket. The only thing that you have to watch out for with this bracket is that you don't tighten it too tight around a small tree where it'll bend it and it won't hold the camera correctly and the camera can fall out. I like that you have the option to run it through the back and through the bracket. So yeah, I think the strap for this camera is overall pretty good. So now it's time to dive into some of the technical stuff that I learned while running this camera and just like picture quality and sensitivity and all that stuff. So this trail camera is 12 megapixels. Um, which megapixels on trail cameras anymore, you can't really go by. Manufacture megapixels on trail cameras anymore, you can't really go by because they can divide pixels and do crazy stuff like that, which is why some cameras say 26 megapixel, when in reality, sometimes it takes less than 10 megapixel pictures. But this camera, the manufacturers say take 12 megapixels, and the quality is pretty good for a budget camera like this one. So um, here's some sample pictures from trail camera pictures that we have gotten with this thing. And you can see the nighttime does pretty good as well as the daytime. And I would say it probably picks deer up at at least 50 feet, if not further than that. I've had deer already walk 60 to 70 feet away and it has picked them up on some occasions. Um, I, I picked this one up for 50 bucks and I think now they're going for like the sensitivity is pretty good. The battery life is also decent depending on some of your settings, but I would say the battery life is probably about average and what you could expect for a trail camera of this price point. So if you're wanting a trail camera for a photo competition as far as photo quality, 
Um, I probably would not go with this camera just because the colors can sometimes be completely messed up. But it's usually fairly reliable when there's not ants in the battery compartment. So while the pictures on this thing are not always the greatest color, it does get the job done and does usually capture the deer enough so that I can count the points on the rack or at least see what it is. So overall, this thing performs when I want it, where I want it, in the cold, in the heat, except for when there's ants in the battery compartment, which um, is a pain. So I've not put this trail camera out this year yet, but I think when I do, I'm gonna probably spray some kind of ant repellent around it, which I don't like doing just for scent. I'm excited to get this trail camera out in the woods this year again for the fourth year in a row. So I'm hoping I can rely on this camera to uh, get me some really good pictures of some nice deer. So right now we're in the middle of testing out a Moultrie camera um, that was refurbished and it was like 35 bucks. So I wanna do an unboxing slash review on that one. So make sure you stay tuned for that coming down the pike. So if you enjoy this kind of video um, review, let me know in the comment section um, what you guys wanna see if you have any particular products that you want me to review. If you enjoy this video and you wanna see more and hit the like button, subscribe, that would really help us out a lot. That helps us make these types of videos and helps us be able to do more with our channel and make more videos so so that's all for this review on this spy point force xd hopefully you found it helpful and uh for a budget trail camera i don't think it's too bad so yeah that's a wrap and i'm out